Number 44. Assuming ideal solution behavior, what is the boiling point of a solution of 9.04 grams of I2 and 75.5 grams of benzene, assuming that the I2 is non-volatile? We have to outline the steps necessary to answer the question, and then we have to answer the question. Okay. So, um, first things first, I'm always going to go and see what they're actually asking for here. They're looking for the boiling point. Now, a boiling point is just a specific temperature. So we're basically looking for TB, if you want to call it that, right? Temperature of boiling. So basically, we're just turning a liquid into a gas, a physical change. But now we have a solution, which means that I have to have a solute and I have to have a solvent. Now, the rules of solutes and solvents is that the little small amount of solid, generally it's a solid, the solute will be dunked into the solvent. So using the wording here, they told us that we had I2, which was being placed in the benzene. The solute always goes in the solvent. And because of that, the I2 would be the solute. And the benzene would be the solvent. Now just know that benzene is C6H6. So they could say benzene, they could say C6H6, it's the same thing. All right. So now I'm dealing with solute, solvents, a boiling point. There's only one formula that has uh, a change in boiling point specifically for solutions. And that formula is this one. So we'll maybe put it up here. Delta TB equals KB times M times I. Now, delta T, uh, delta TB, the, ch the triangle means the change. So this is the change in the boiling point. Keep in mind that the question asked for what is the actual boiling point. But if we could find a change, we can find the actual boiling point. Now, just know that when you're dealing with changes in boiling point, a boiling point, so the point in which a liquid turns into a gas, a boiling point will only elevate. It will never depress, meaning that a boiling point can only go higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Now, higher from what? It's always from the pure solvent. So I went to the back of a textbook to find out the pure boiling point of our solvent, which is the benzene, the C6H6. And looks like benzene, pure, meaning with nothing else in it, will boil at 80.1 degrees Celsius. Since we're adding a solute into the solvent, our boiling point is going to change. It's not going to change by a lot, but it's still going to change. Now just know that the boiling point will always go higher. So if this is a multiple choice, and they give you a pure boiling point of 80.1, you could automatically get rid of all the answers that are below 80. A boiling point will never go lower than the pure amount. It will always go higher. So maybe from that, you can eliminate a couple of answer choices, um, but we're going to find out the exact boiling point. Now the delta, the delta T, the change in the boiling point equals the KB. Now this is the, your boiling point constant, and it's always based off of the solvent again. So I went in the back of the textbook to find out that specific constant for benzene, because benzene is our solvent. And it was 2.53. So we have this number. So 2.53 degrees Celsius per molality. That's that little squiggly M. The next one is times by molality, which we don't know. And then times by I, I is called the Vant Hoff factor, which we will get into in a little bit. So it looks like if we need to find out the change in the boiling point, I need to find out the molality and I need to find out the Vant Hoff factor. So we'll start off with letter A. Let's outline those steps. Step one, maybe I'll just put step one is to find 
Molality. Now, molality formula is right here. So maybe I'll bring this up. And maybe what I'll do is we'll start working on part B because that's where we're going to start calculating. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just bring this down, give us a little bit more room. And let's go now. Okay, so molality equals the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. We identified that the I2 was the solute and the benzene is the solvent. However, we don't have the correct units. We have 9.04 grams of the I2. But since this is the solute, I need to have that unit in moles. But grams to moles, we can do that, right? If you want to go from grams of one thing to moles of another thing, you always divide by the molar mass, mm, I'll say, right? And if you're dividing by the molar mass, we got to go online, well, not online, but on the periodic table, and find out what the molar mass is of I2. There are two iodines, and each iodine, I believe, weighs 127.9. Um, I'm just going to check. Ah, drat. 126.9. In my spare time, I'd like to memorize the numbers. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to do that math. 2 times 126.9. Sure. Right? 126? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to divide by 253.8. So I'm going to take the 9.04, divided by that number, and I get 0. 0.0... .0 Three five six. When I keep, uh, you know, doing the math for molality, I will take this full number. But I'm just going to write down a couple of decimals just to not, you know, have numbers all over the place. The next thing is we need to find out the kilograms of the solvent. They gave us 75.5 grams of the benzene, C686. So let's just quickly convert to kilograms of the C686. Grams to kilograms, that's dividing by 100. You could take the decimal, move it over to the left three times. So this would be 0 0.0755. So we have our two numbers now. We have the moles of the solute and the kilograms of the solvent. So let's find out that molality. Molality equals the 0 0.0356 on the top and the 0 0.0755 on the bottom. Molality equals this number divided by 0 0.0755. Looks good to me. And I get a molality of 0 0.4718, I guess we'll say. So now we have this molality. We have this molality, we have the Kb. The only thing we need to find is the Van Hopt factor. So that's step two. I guess we'll say identify the I value. Now the I value just basically tells you how many ions does your solute break down into. Now you have two chances, right, or two choices. You're going to either see covalent compounds being thrown in your solvent, or you're going to see ionic compounds. For covalent ones, your I value will always be a 1. That means that you're just going to have one whole solute. It is not going to be broken down into its ions. This is covalent, right? You only have nonmetals. So anytime that you spot out that you have a covalent solute, your I value will be 1. So we know this. So step 3 is to now uh, find the change in the temperature, the change in the boiling temperature. So I guess I'll put it over here. Delta Tb equals my Kb value, which was the 2.53 that was found in the textbook, times by the molality, 
four seven one eight and then we could just throw the van hop factor in there it's going to be one so you know you don't really have to do it in this case but just make sure um let's multiply it delta tb equals 2.53 times i'm going to take the whole number and i get a, a, I mean, a roughly low change. You're looking at maybe, you know, one degree change, two degrees. So if you get an answer that's like 100 or 200, go back. Some, something happened. I'm going to say one point, I guess 1.2 degrees Celsius. Your delta TBs are always going to be in Celsius because that's the KB uh, unit, one of the KB units. Now keep in mind that this was the change. This is not the actual boiling point. So the last step is to find the boiling point. And from what we stated before, the boiling point can only go higher. The pure boiling point of the benzene, it's always going to be of the solvent, is 80.1 degrees Celsius. We know that we have a change of 1.2 degrees. And that boiling point's only going to go higher. So we know that we have to add it with the 1.2 degrees Celsius. And if I add this, what do I get? 81.3 degrees Celsius. And that's the answer. That's the actual boiling point. A little bit of a change, but still makes a difference. Let's color it and call it the video. Okay, what'd you think? I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. I love talking to you guys. I try to get back to you as much as I can. Um, thank you so much for being part of the community. Check out the links in the description. We have goodies for you guys. Uh, study guys coming your way to share with your friends, your classmates. We really want you to do well. We got thousands of problems out there just for you guys to learn at your own pace in your chem class, your physics, and your math class. We got you covered, and we're here every step of the way for you guys, okay? So good luck on those tests and quizzes. I'm always rooting for you. Always keep learning, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.